Philippine City volunteers form a disaster relief assessment team to care for the affected residents in Porak. Many Syrian refugee children residing in Turkey can no longer celebrate Children's Day due to working in factories. Welcome to Headlines on Laurie Chen. Thank you for joining us. Recently, a massive earthquake struck the Philippines. Therefore, city volunteers quickly assembled a disaster relief assessment team and headed over to Porak, one of the hardest hit areas, to care for the affected residents. The magnitude 261 earthquake turned houses into ruins. Bright said that after his mother came home from work, she could not believe what she saw. When she came home, she cried because she couldn't do anything about it. The quake destroyed our home, but we can't turn back time. His house was destroyed, but luckily his family was not injured. I really want to thank God because my house has collapsed. But nobody in my family was injured. But I'm still quite sad because I worked so hard to build this house. But it was destroyed in a quake. City volunteers from Manila went to Porak, a heavily damaged town, to assess the disaster. The damage is enormous, especially with concrete houses and old houses. At least 30 percent of houses were completely destroyed. The quake was too severe that even the land has cracked open. Their livelihoods and their farms are over there, but they don't dare to live there. They live here temporarily, and you can see the tent area at the back. Why do they live here? Because there's a little creek nearby, and it's convenient to them. With the landslides in the mountains, the residents do not know what their future will be, so the volunteers will continue caring for them. The U.S. City volunteers have long been collaborating with Caritas in caring for the people in Sierra Leone. This time around, volunteers have brought over various jinx of food products for both the staff members and children at the St. Mary's Children Home. Most of the orphans that were taken in are survivors from the Ebola crisis or mudslide disasters. <laughs> I make it a point of duty that I come over to the children because the nearest parish is a bit far off. So every Sunday I'm here to celebrate the Eucharist. The children that we have, they are Ebola orphans, they are mudslide orphans, they are orphans of natural cause, accident and so on. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 we praise your name. When we were approached by Father to say, oh, they are opening this place uh, and uh, to take care of the children, we felt, we felt so happy to come and be with them. They used to call new words. Survived. Survived. He was known as survived at first. Because he was surviving on the charity of people, so they knew him as survived, survived. Anybody had food, survived, and he was there. During the Ebola, the family got, got infected, and they were taken to the holding center, and then they never returned to the community. Broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. There's nobody asking us about them. So if we don't take care of them, then there's nobody. We feel it's our responsibility and we take care of them as if we have given birth to them. It's very nice and honor we can come back after so many years. We see a nice home here. Today we are very delighted that we have people from the Sushi Foundation who are here to help and to see what we are, the effect of the gift that they have been giving us, the blankets, the bed, and all the other supplies that came for the emergency. You can eat the breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So this is a 
a very important love from Taiwan. The kids are happy because the gift is one, but when they realize that there are people who care, psychologically it helps them to grow up in a dignified manner, with confidence. That it's not all about us, that there we have an extended family outside who could think and plan and send for us. We hope that they will become responsible boys and girls who will be able to in turn help others. And so they're having experienced so much love and care, they will also be able to help others in the future. In Zaka, Zimbabwe, many houses have been damaged by Cyclone Idai. For now, the affected residents are staying in tents and they are running out of food. Therefore, city volunteers have been distributing the much-needed aid supplies to them. With the help of a Zaka community leader, city volunteers visit a cyclone-affected residence. This house collapsed due to the heavy rain that Cyclone Idai had brought. This door has been slanted and the house has become uninhabitable. They are staying in a tent now, and this house over here collapsed after a storm in January. It has been damaged for the second time. Since Cyclone Idai came from the east, almost all the walls on the east side of the houses have been damaged. We're grateful that the government has given us tents. Now we're sleeping inside them. We desperately need money to pay for children's tuition as well as food because we ran out of food. Another affected resident who lives in the 15th district broke into tears upon seeing the volunteers of the first charity organization that has come to visit them. Despite the disaster, the residents are optimistic and they seem to express their gratitude toward the volunteers. Taking part in the Send Love to Africa initiative, the Jinx of Bo's pottery team has been collaborating with the U.S. pottery teacher for the past eight months and coming up with various pottery pieces. They recently held a gathering to inspire the compassionate givings of the public. The beautiful pottery was done by Terry Rothrock, a pottery teacher from the U.S. Touched by Tsuji's worldwide charity deeds, he wants to tell cyclone survivors in Eastern Africa. About taking care of people who have natural disasters and uh, to show people the importance of volunteering, not expecting money in exchange for a service, but just be out of the goodness of your heart. Terry Rothrock agreed in 2017 that after he retired, he will return to Tsuji to teach pottery. And in the end, he came as promised and resorted to this charity sale. <laughs> After he went back, he really retired one year later, and then he came again. He's been here for eight months, volunteering his time to help us make pottery and other artwork. So we're very grateful to him. Terry Rothrock and the Tsuji Pottery team not only produce works professionally, they also hope their works will indirectly bring love and warmth to the affected residents. Turkey, Children's Day falls on the same day. However, for many of the Syrian refugee children residing in Turkey, they can no longer celebrate the holiday like the rest of the kids their age. This is all due to the fact that many have become child workers due to their families' financial struggles.
On Children's Day, Turkish children have the day off. It's a proper national holiday for the kids. However, for this group of children, it is no longer a day they get to celebrate. Ben Muhammed, 10 yaşındayım, çalışıyorum, monitör. Yani nihna ratib abu yirat bil bil hada bil dawla ma mkafina. Benim adım Ahmet, 14 yaşındayım, sayıda ayakkabıda çalışıyorum. 14-year-old Ahmed works 12-hour shifts at a local shoe factory sewing. His monthly salary is 700 Turkish lira, which is the equivalent to only about 120 US dollars. What he looks most forward to is the weekend where he gets to attend classes at Al Menahal School. That is the only place where his smile reappears on his face. <laughs> I don't like to work because it is very tiring. I get really tired. Sometimes I get so tired that my fingers cramp up. But I would always tell myself that I must like working because this is the only way that I can help my family financially. Another boy who is also not able to celebrate Children's Day is Zuma. He is now an apprentice at an auto repair shop. I'm going to change the oil now. I have been working here for about a year and a half already. The rent in Turkey has been increasing. This makes it really hard for the Syrian refugees who are residing here. Zuma escaped over here with his family. In the very beginning, they didn't even have enough money to buy any food to eat. A boy his age should be going to school, but due to his family's financial struggles, he is not able to attend school like the rest of the children. I hope that by working part-time will help him in the future. The Syrian refugee children are far away from their homeland and their dreams. That's why they cherish so much their chance at getting a proper education at the Almenahal School more than anything in the world. The children who come here to study are all extremely hard workers. They are all very driven. It's because they all know that this is the only shot they got left to get a proper education. Perhaps no longer able to celebrate Children's Day forces a child to grow up. However, the Syrian children have survived against all odds. Their determination and resiliency is something that no one can take away from them. Speaking of refugees, a school for refugees in Malaysia had just held their graduation ceremony. It's with great pride that the school staff members looked on while the students are showcasing their overall growth. They hope the students will be able to be self-sustainable in the future. Today is the 19th graduation ceremony. Currently, there are more than 200 students at the school. The school principal congratulates the students on entering another stage in learning. The students with outstanding academic performance receive special certificates. In the future, the school provide hairstyling class and classes teaching practical skills. This way, the students will be able to make a living upon graduating from the school. City volunteers have been interacting with the school. Therefore, they've witnessed the growth of the students. We have a group of Chinese teachers who teach these refugee children at the school. We hope that the children can have a more stable life in Malaysia after graduation. The graduating students perform at the ceremony, showcasing their talents with confidence. Hopefully they'll be able to live independently in this foreign country in the future. In Thailand, city volunteers have long been devoting their efforts in caring for the international refugee population. Recently, city Thailand chapter signed a cooperation agreement with another NGO to provide the Burmese refugees a chance at getting a proper education. At the border of Thailand and Myanmar, the medical staff at a small clinic are safeguarding the health of international refugees.
The local resources are lacking. The local medical professionals have limited medical knowledge. Therefore, if Zijie can provide training for the staff members or if some doctors are willing to come and provide help, it will be very helpful for the local residents. Therefore, city volunteers in Thailand have traveled from Bangkok to Masu to sign a cooperation agreement. Master Zhen Yan tell us if we help someone must be all alive to help them, not for short. So uh, in the future, maybe we have a, a chance to cooperate. So all this support is very crucial for rebuilding the community as well as to protect the human rights and to empower the young people, women, children, and then to get better brighter future for, for the children. These stateless people cannot receive subsidies from the government. The help from the organizations can protect their human rights. After Tsuji signs the cooperation agreement, it will be able to provide better care for stateless people, give them much needed support. Stay in Thailand. Starting from 2016, Tsuji Thailand chapter implemented the new shoot scholarship program in order to help the local impoverished students to pursue an education. Today we will meet one of the scholarship recipients, Natalia, who is hoping to study nursing when she goes to college next year, so that she can also have the abilities to help those who are in need. Before daybreak, Nitaya has already set out on her way to school. <laughs> Leaving home before the crack of dawn and walking to tag a vehicle, Nitaya has to spend a long time going to school. Despite the long journey, she always looks energetic. Besides studying diligently, she also actively participate in school activities, hoping to fulfill her dreams. I hope in the future I can become someone who can help the people in need. I will spread the love I have received from volunteers. Nitaya grew up in a single parent's family. After her parents' divorce, she lives in a suburban simple house with her mother, grandmother, and siblings. Her family relies on her mother's salary to get by. Before I got divorced, I did not worry much about my family's income. But after that, life became more difficult because I'm the only person in my family who makes money. Three years ago, Tsuji Thailand chapter started to implement New Shu Scholarships program. Back then, Nitaya was a 10th grader and was one of the scholarship recipients. Later, the volunteers discovered her family's impoverished situation, so Tsuji also provided a monthly subsidy to them. Tsuji volunteers not only provide scholarships to the students in need, but they also conduct home visits regularly. If students have financial difficulties, volunteers will also offer them subsidies. When volunteers made the regular visits to Nitaya's family, besides caring for the family's living conditions, volunteers also help them clean their home. Both my grandma and I feel very touched and happy because no one has been so nice to us. In June of this year, Nitaya will become a college freshman. The love of volunteers will accompany her on her way to pursue dreams. Continuing on the topic of new ways to process food waste in Taiwan, today we'll introduce you a small insect known as the black soldier fly. One tiny insect is known to be able to eat up to two kilograms of food waste. Let's check out our in-depth report. This is where we dump kitchen waste. After that, we don't really need to spend a lot of time to manage it. The black soldier fly will automatically reproduce in it, and extra maggots will end up in this collection bucket, where we will use them in another application.
when Wu Mengkun of Jai's Imi Community College promoted the concept of symbiosis between fish and vegetables, he inadvertently discovered that this little insect, which is a little bit like a fly, has the ability to play a key role in the circular economy. At the beginning, our community college was promoting hydroponic vegetables and symbiosis between fish and vegetable symbiosis. In the course of this work, we found that a black soldier fly is very useful, so we designed this device. Black soldier fly is part of the insect class Diptera, a scavenger insect. Its entire life history has four different forms and four different appearances from eggs, larva, pupa, and adult insect. The larva stage mainly feeds on organic resources. About one metric ton of the kitchen waste requires 20 to 25 grams of this hatching larva, which can handle about one metric ton of kitchen waste. It can also produce about 200 kilograms of larva. The larvae of this insect are dedicated to eating organic waste such as kitchen waste, which can solve one of the most difficult problems in recycling. Actually, this larvae can even produce chitin. These black soju flies produce lots of chitin, such as shrimp and crab shells. This raw material is effective in protecting plants from pathogens and microorganisms. Black soldier flies and vegetable symbiosis system designed by Jai's Imi Community College is mainly for schools and communities. This is a golden pupa breeding barrel. The golden pupa breeding barrel is also called the black soldier fly kitchen waste barrel. The kitchen waste is left here for the black soldier fly after our students have had lunch. It is all put here. There are more than 300 students and teachers at Jai's Minha Elementary. The school uses the black soldier fly system developed by Imi Community College to deal with the problem of leftover food from their lunch. Black soldier flies can solve our school's kitchen waste problem. Since the spread of African swine fever, school kitchen waste has become a headache for our school and our country. This is what we can do at Minghe Elementary to help the problem. The school's kitchen waste is used to feed the black soldier fly with the larvae used to feed fish and the fish feces used to fertilize vegetables. This is a virtuous natural cycle. Still, the biggest benefit is to let students understand the value of recycling resources. Why did the school push this black soldier fly system? At the time, I was thinking how can I let the children think this garbage can be turned into gold. My hope is to let the children in this life to cherish resources and care for this earth. So we are always letting the children think about how to reuse what they didn't want. Recently, the Tsuji Northern California chapter had a graduation ceremony for the Tsuchings from four different universities. Not only were the Tsuchings present, but they also seized the opportunity to invite like-minded youth to participate in the event. Thank you for watching. See you next time.